you're starting. Do you want uh, the rest of us to hide our cameras first, or do you want us? Uh, I mean, I'll hide my cameras since I'm not really doing anything. And yeah, it's you know what, it, it's uh, it's up to you. Probably the one that should be you know uh, off camera is the the two support folks. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Well, no problem. <laughs> All right. Good morning, everybody. And welcome to day one of the Region 9 Tribal EPA Conference for 2021. And I'm just taking a look at our list of attendees. It looks like a, a lot of people are here. And I saw that you were saying hello in the chat out on the lobby page if you want to say hello here in our welcome and our opening you can feel free to do that as well um, in fact i would love it if somebody would just say hi in the chat to let me know that you are seeing us and hearing us right now all right thank you lisa i know i can always count on you um, again it's really lovely to finally be getting started with our conference for the year and of course there is a lot of regret over the global circumstances making it so that we could not meet in person and that is really disappointing uh, but i'm just glad that so many of you are able to be here with us right now and uh sorry about it. i know there was a little confusion yesterday because Technically, day one was yesterday, but that was the R talk day, just like it always is when we are in person. And as always, EPA is responsible for that. So they were doing it over on their side of things, but it was still technically day one. Uh, so yeah, sorry about that. Um, I, I guess I'll write that in my notes to make sure we make that more clear if we ever do this all virtually again, but hopefully we are not going to have to do that. Um, so, um, Looks like we got plenty of people here, so I'm just gonna jump in. I, I did uh, something that is unusual for me. Most of you know me and I am not one given to preparing formal opening remarks, but I feel like this is a formal special occasion. So I did prepare some remarks um, and I apologize if it looks like I'm not looking directly into the camera. I am just referring to my, my notes here, but uh, I am looking into the electronic eye uh, and uh, trying to make as much of a connection as I can with all of you, my, my friends, my colleagues, and, and people that I miss so much. So let me just jump into the formal part of this morning's remarks. So good morning and welcome to the 2021 Tribal EPA Region 9 Conference. I am Shasta Gon. I am the Environmental Director and I'm also the Tribal Historic Preservation Officer for the Palo Band of Mission Indians. Paula is home to Kupangawicham, Payomkawicham, and Kumeyaay people, and it is located on Payomkawicham territory in the place that the colonizers named San Diego, California. I myself am not indigenous, but I will say it has been the honor of my life to work for Paula for these past almost 18 years and to work with so many dedicated and passionate indigenous people and communities and all of the people who work for those communities. And we're just so glad and when I say we, it's the royal we, me and my staff and everybody who helped plan this conference. We are so glad that you are joining us this morning. And I want to begin by acknowledging that everywhere we go, no matter where we go, we are on indigenous land. We are on tribal land. And we work in what the EPA and the federal government calls Region 9, which includes the political boundaries of the states of Arizona, California, and Nevada. 
but those are artificial political boundaries. And within those political boundaries lie the traditional homelands of hundreds of tribal communities. And they have stories, they have histories, they have traditions, they have places, places from countless generations of indigenous peoples. And the tribes have truly inhabited this land from time immemorial, from the beginning of time. And that's why this year's conference theme emphasizes tribal land, tribal knowledge, tribal sovereignty. Our work as tribal environmental professionals is based on that deep and abiding connection of indigenous peoples to land, to water, to air, and the countless non-human relatives that dwell upon the land. Hang on a second while I shut down a pop-up on my screen. Sorry about that. There we go. Okay. So again, it's the land, it's the water, it's the air. These are the things that our indigenous communities have been stewarding since time immemorial. And that has continued despite centuries of colonization and dispossession. And that continues to happen in many ways today. And yet tribal people, indigenous people, they are still here. You are still stewarding the land. You are still fighting to uphold tribal sovereignty and you are working to protect your communities with the help of non-indigenous people like myself. And the work that we do as tribal environmental professionals, that work is indispensable. Now we are living in a time of crisis and I would like to say that that time of crisis is unprecedented, an overused word, but tribes have been dealing with this kind of crisis since the first colonizers set foot on these shores. And if anything, indigenous peoples, they are uniquely suited to deal with the global threat of climate change because they have been dealing with existential threats for hundreds of years. And for nearly two years now, we have been dealing with a global pandemic, but again, pandemics are not new to tribes. Indigenous resilience, resistance, and persistence are finally being recognized for their power. And now Native folks in the United States are being asked to show the way out of this man-made capitalist crisis, this environmental crisis. I could not be more lucky to be fighting alongside you, my tribal colleagues, the non-Indigenous people who work with tribes, and all of those who are committed to protecting our collective environment. This conference is about strengthening, growing, and improving our relationship with our partners at the EPA. And we are fortunate to have so many dedicated people in Region 9 who work with us to help us navigate the federal bureaucracy. It's not perfect. It's far from perfect. But I do believe that Region 9's tribal section is committed to the partnership with tribes, to listening and working cooperatively. And that's why this conference is so important. That's why for over 20 years, tribes in the EPA have been able to come together with this common goal of making positive change. And again, I am so disappointed that for the second year now, we have not been able to embrace our friends, our colleagues in person, and welcome new people, new faces to our tribal environmental professionals family. I'm so happy to say that so many of the people I've worked with over the years, they're not just my colleagues, they're my friends. I'm also really happy to be able to announce that we're already planning for next year. Yes, we are hosting again next year. Uh, and we have already committed to having the 2022 Tribal EPA Region 9 Conference in Lake Tahoe. We've been trying to do that for the last two years and we are gonna try again for 2022. So we have already booked the Harris Lake Tahoe Resort for the week of October 24th. We're going back to tradition a little bit. It's usually been the week before Halloween. So start thinking about your Halloween costume uh, for the Halloween costume contest and what you wanna sing in karaoke because I swear we will be together in Lake Tahoe next year. If this pandemic is still going on, I get the feeling we're gonna have bigger problems to worry about but we are getting the better of it. And I am positive that we are going to be able to be together. Um, and hopefully we will be together even sooner than that for one of our upcoming RTALK meetings. Hopefully that winter RTALK will be in person. 
not my decision. So I, I defer to Laura Ebert and Mervyn Wright, who are the decision makers for the R Talk. So I can't close my remarks without thanking my tremendous and amazing staff for everything they have done to make this event possible. Uh, Heidi Brow, who is my water quality specialist, Kurt Bros, who is the uh, in what is he? What are you, Kurt? Not the environmental planner. You are the wildlife biologist um, and just all around uh, go to guy. Um, Alexis Wallach, who is actually my assistant TIPO, but has been extremely helpful with helping us get the conference up and running, especially this week. And our consulting conference coordinator, David Burney. He was indispensable for developing our website, all of the amazing graphics. And if you like your t-shirt and your pin and your swag and your stickers, David is the guy that you want to thank. And you're also going to see all four of those folks as monitors during the sessions. They're going to be behind the scenes with our speakers, just making sure that everything is running smoothly from the speaker side and helping with questions from attendees when it comes time for Q&A. I also want to shout out to the members of the intertribal planning team. They gave amazing advice and support for everything that we have done to bring us to this day. That's Mervyn Wright, Lorinda Antone, Rob Roy, John Flores, Vanessa Martinez, Brian Davidson, Leonard Bruce, and the inimitable Cliff Benuelos. And then, of course, the folks at EPA, uh, especially CJ Mishima, who has just been wonderful, Julianne Schroeder, who is tremendous in everything she does, and Jeremy Bauer, who I'm very grateful to have on our side in Region 9. You guys are all wonderful, and I can't thank you enough for everything that you have done. And then finally, I want to give a, a thank you and, and just an acknowledgement to John Flores and the San Pasquale Band because John and his team, they did this for four years. I don't know how they did this for four years. Uh, I just wanna say I do have a little bone to pick with CJ and Jeremy for, for twisting my arm into putting in an application to, to be a host. Um, and then it ended up getting accepted and I was like, oh shoot, I guess I actually have to do this now. But following in the footsteps of John Flores and his amazing team, three years in person and then scrambling to be able to do last year as the first ever virtual event uh, was just fantastic. So uh, John, we are all very, very grateful to you. So on the back end, uh, we've got some other speakers coming up, but on the back end, I am gonna talk a little bit about some conference logistics. We've been getting a lot of questions from folks about you know, how do I enter my session or how do I join as an attendee? And so when we have a little bit of time at the end after our main speakers, I'm going to go ahead and fill in a few of the blanks and just give a, a brief on screen tour of the Excel events lobby so that you all can get a little bit familiar with how we're going to be doing things for the next three days. But now that you're on and you're in, I suggest that you just start looking around and getting familiar with all of the different yeah. controls and everything. It's actually not that complicated, so I think you'll figure it out. All right, okay, so at this down. point, I am, oh, somebody is not muted on our speaker team. So I just want to make sure that everybody else is muted. Please take a look and check. All right, thank you. All right, so at this point, uh, it's my honor to be able to introduce Deborah Jordan. Deborah is the Acting Regional Administrator for US EPA Region 9. Uh, she's been doing that job for the Pacific Southwest office in San Francisco, again, Region 9, since 2016. Uh, Deborah, maybe you can explain how you can still be acting after four years or five years. Why not? Why not be, you know, the, the full administrator? But here we are. Uh, and prior to this role, uh, Deborah was detailed to the EPA headquarters in Washington, D.C. She was a senior policy advisor to the assistant administrator of the Office of Air and Radiation, and she focused on Clean Air Act regulatory matters. She was the air director in Region 9 from 2004 to 2015, doing Clean Air Act work in California, Arizona, and Nevada, and also Hawaii and the Pacific Territories, which are also part of Region 9, and on the lands of the 148 Indian tribes. And Dr. Jordan has been with EPA for 30 years. She earned the federal government's presidential rank award in 2014. And she has bachelor's and master's degrees from the University of Kansas. 
and a PhD from the University of California at Berkeley, all in chemical engineering, which blows my mind. So Deborah, we are really excited to have you here and I'm gonna turn the floor over to you. Well, thank you so much, Shasta, and thank you for the wonderful opening remarks. I think that was just a great way to get us going. And before I get into my opening remarks, I want to just explain that I've actually only been acting regional administrator since January 20th when the prior group left, but I've been deputy regional administrator for several years, which is a role I'm still playing. So thank you for that question. Um, well, I would like to wish everyone a good morning and thank you all for participating in the 29th Annual Tribal and EPA Region 9 Annual Conference. And I know, as Shasta said um, so eloquently, we had hoped at one point during the planning process that this conference would be in person. But still, I'm pleased that the conference committee found a way to convene us virtually again this year so that we can maintain our tradition of gathering every year. That's really the most important thing. And Shasta also mentioned that we are all on indigenous land. So before I go any further, I, I do want to acknowledge that I'm living and working on unceded land of the Miuekma Ohlone tribe, and I'm very grateful for that. So as I said, this week marks the 29th time we've convened a conference and our goals remain the same, sharing our successes, our lessons learned and our best practices and growing and strengthening our professional and our government to government relationships. Continuing to work toward achieving these goals is even more important during these difficult times. And I really hope and, and believe that this virtual space will provide a constructive and productive dialogue for us this week. This year's theme is tribal land, tribal knowledge, and tribal sovereignty. We recognize and acknowledge the tribal ecological relationships developed over millennia, and we really value the opportunity to work alongside tribes to support your protection of air, land, and water. As you all know, we have a robust agenda this week filled with a range of speakers and I encourage you, as Shasta did, to take advantage of all that the conference has to offer. It's just, I think, one of the best I've ever seen in my time with EPA Region 9. So before I share some celebratory news, I, I want to take a moment to acknowledge this year's challenges with COVID-19 and the Delta variant. Um, it's a challenge that's continued to affect all of us in so many ways, and, and I really appreciate and I wanna recognize everyone's strength and resilience during this time. As I said, I know we were really looking forward to meeting in person, but the health and safety of the conference participants was the top priority of the organizers as it should be. So here we are in our virtual space. But the pandemic has, thought us, has taught us to think of new ways to be successful in our work, to find new ways to reach out to our communities and I think to be thankful too for the gifts that each day brings. So let's be thankful for the gift that this day is bringing us, the gift of being together. The COVID-19 challenge hasn't been the only one that we have faced just this year. Over the past several months, many of us have also faced the additional impact of wildfires. And in some cases that included the destruction of our landscape, our homes and our places of work and many more of us have felt the fire's impact on our air quality and some even on our water. So if you've been affected by wildfire and you haven't yet reached out to us, please let us know if there's anything we can do to support you or to connect you with our partners across the government, including FEMA or state agencies who may be able to help. We're doing what we can to help prepare tribes to be as ready as possible for the effects of climate change. We continue to support and fund tribes' development of adaptation and emergency response plans, as well as vulnerability assessments. And I hope that some of you were able, I know some of you were able to attend our webinar a few weeks ago on climate change, but if you weren't able to do that, please reach out to our tribal branch because we can share the slides from that webinar we can connect you with the presenters on the topics that you're especially interested in. We really want to help prepare as much as we possibly can. We also invite you to attend the think tank session this week 
um, so that you could give us more ideas on how we can help you in preparing for climate change and its effects. Well, let's now turn to some celebratory news. This is always, you know, the various ways that we celebrate here, even remotely, um, are so important. Uh, despite our difficult times, we have some successes this year that we're going to highlight, and I do want to start with grants. For most of the last year, our staff worked closely with tribes from, to finalize work plans and budgets for new grants, and our grants management office awarded 313 actions, awarding $42 million to tribes for fiscal year 22. These grants put resources into the hands of the tribal environmental programs to do your important work on the ground, protecting air and water quality, managing solid and hazardous waste, cleaning up sites, building capacity, reaching communities through outreach and education, among other important work that you do. So that is just great. Another piece of news I wanna share is that EPA's administrator, Michael Regan, has now visited Region 9. And while here in the region, he met with President Nez on the Navajo Nation. He was very keen to tour abandoned uranium mine sites and get a sense of that problem. So he did so, and he talked to tribal members. Um, and I know that he looks forward very much to coming back to Region 9. I can say from my personal experience that he really brings to his work such great compassion and such an ability to listen to people and to meet them where they are. And so I look forward to his return to Region 9 and hope that we can get him to additional uh, tribal lands. Environmental justice is one of his and President Biden's very top priorities for the agency. And of course, it continues to be a top priority for EPA Region 9. Our EJ team is holding a session tomorrow to support a conversation about environmental justice and to identify opportunities to address issues affecting communities overburdened with pollution. And I want to particularly highlight this one for you and invite you to participate so that you can share your thoughts as EPA supports environmental justice across our programs. I also invite you, and if you haven't heard of this, it's, it's really something I want you to keep in mind, uh, to consider attending our newly established monthly regional EJ community check-in meetings. These check-ins are, are open to any community, including tribal communities, to raise environmental concerns with our EJ team. And Alan Baycock um, is the point of contact for this. So please reach out to Alan if you have any questions about these meetings. I wanna now turn to consultation and emphasize EPA's and Region 9's dedication to improving our consultation processes. We have over the last year been engaged in a multi-layer effort to better understand tribes' concerns about consultation and explore opportunities for improvement. Um, and at the national level, the American Indian Environmental Office has been reviewing comments from tribes and developing options for an improved consultation process. At the regional level, tribes and regional staff continue to meet monthly to discuss opportunities to improve on our best practices. And I think this is so important and I'm, I'm looking forward to this work continuing because we know we can improve in this area, even though each and every day we do try to do our best. But if you'd like more, import, more information on these monthly meetings, um, our points of contact are Kelsey Stricker and Jeremy Bauer. Okay, I do wanna take just a moment before we continue to acknowledge the recent NTOC meetings. They, they occurred earlier this month and, and we got constructive feedback in, in those meetings. I was there um, virtually, of course, um, but I was really happy to see so much great Region 9 representation. And, um, you know, the, the stories that were shared on the impacts of climate change were so meaningful to everybody who was there. So we're going to be working based on all the input that we got at the INTOC to make positive change to better support your work and, and, and our partnership. And that is across um, the EPA headquarters and regional offices. So next, I am very pleased to turn to accomplishments in the area of treatment in a similar manner as a state. I get to recognize our approval of two California tribes this past quarter for their work on gaining TAS, one under the Clean Water Act and the other under the Clean Air Act. And before I get into the particulars, I want to particularly acknowledge 
the honorable leaders, the council members, and the environmental department staff for their tireless efforts in collaborating with our team at Region 9. This takes a lot of work. I know it does. We could not do this without each other. So this is just, these are both examples of great teamwork. So as you all know, TAS provides tribes with more direct roles and responsibilities in implementing the federal environmental programs. The first um, tribe I'm going to get to recognize is the La Costa Band of Diagano Mission Indians, which is now able to administer a portion of the Clean Air Act. The La Posta Band of Diagano Mission Indians has been approved for TAS for Clean Air Act sections 107D, 126A, and 505A2. And what this means is that um, this is now formalizing La Posta's role in Clean Air Act designations processes and establishing that La Posta will receive notifications from certain permitting authorities. And La Posta will also receive notifications for major new or modified sources for prevention of significant deterioration. I think it is now time to present the certificate and congratulate Vice Chairman James Potts Hill. Is that right? Do we have a virtual presentation of a certificate? Oh, sorry, I was muted. Okay. <laughs> I, am, I am pulling up the certificate right now. So Great. stand by. All right. All right. It should be showing on the screen now. Yes. Excellent. Okay. Is anyone from La Posta here to... Um, or would anyone like to give any remarks? If not, that's fine too. And I'm gonna stop sharing this for a moment okay. just so that I can see who is, uh, if anybody from La Posta is here to share. I'll give you a moment. All right, it looks like, our La Posta folks, uh, we will we will just congratulate them um, yes. virtually, and uh, yeah, congratulations! They they've done great work. Congratulations, La Posta, and um, maybe we'll congratulate you in person when we're in person next time because you know this is this is always such a great in person thing. So um, we can always do it a second time, right, Shasta? Yes. All right. Okay. So next, I want to recognize the Resagini Rancheria which is now the administrator of the Clean Water Act's Water Quality Standards and Certification Program. The Resagini Rancheria, located in Northern California, joins the 26 others implementing the Water Quality Standards Program. And with this TAS, these tribes have the authority to develop surface water quality standards and issue water quality certifications of federal permits. And this TAS approval will assist the tribe in protecting several creeks within the Resagini Rancheria, including a small portion of the Klamath River. And now we have the certificate being presented virtually, Shasta, right? That is and correct. Yes. Let me just pull that up. All right, there we are. And congratulations to Resagini for their achievement. Thanks, Jessica. Do we have anyone from Resagini to who would like to make remarks? Hi, Director Jordan. Good morning. My name is Shauna McCovey, and I'm the Director of Natural Resources and Governmental Affairs at Resagini Rancheria. On the on the uh, webcast today, here uh, we have the Tribal Council. I don't see them pulling up their camera, but I wanted to give them an opportunity to say thank you um, if they're able to connect. So we have um, a Frank Dowd online. Is that one of your council members? That is, yes. Okay, Mr. Dowd, please feel free to speak. So my name is uh, Frank Spaghetti Dowd. First, I have to apologize for the connection. We are unable to pull up the video or it gets really glitchy. So my apologies for that. Um, I'm here today on behalf of uh, Resigated Rancheria Natural Resources Department. Our executive director, Megan Van Pelt. Kobe 
and obviously the uh, council of Resigate Rancheria, we are honored and we want to uh, send a big thanks out to uh, Region 9, Loretta Venegas and everybody else that was involved and complete our TAS. It's a big step in the right direction for us and we're honored and thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I, I appreciate, appreciate those words. All right. Well, in closing, I want to thank everybody again for being here today and to offer a sincere thank you to the host organizers, Pala Band of Mission Indians, on stepping into this role. Um, we also want to thank, as, as Shasta noted, the previous organizers, San Pasqual Band of Mission Indians, for their continued support. And, you know, I'm really humbled to speak before you today, and, and I certainly am committed to doing whatever I can to support and strengthen the relationship between EPA and tribes as I continue in this role as acting regional administrator and in my regular role as deputy regional administrator, too. Always feel welcome to reach out to me or my staff. Um, you know, we're here for you. Um, we recognize that it takes a lot of flexibility and willingness to adapt on everybody's part to participate in this way. We appreciate that. Um, but even when we're outside of our conference week, please know that our doors are open to you and, and, and we want to make ourselves available in whatever way it's needed. Now, our next uh, speaker is our Deputy Administrator, Janet McCabe. And, um, let me ask my team if she is yet online. I think she is not. Is that right? I don't see her. So I am going to uh, defer perhaps to one of our support folks, either Laura or CJ, to see if they've heard anything about um, when she will be able to, or if she has joined us or when she'll be able to join us. You know, I think she was going to join us right at the bottom of the hour, Shasta. So do you want to maybe give some of those logistical bits of info while we wait sure. for her to join? Does that make sense? Yeah. And I'm seeing a message that she's, um, it looks like she's backstage. Um, ah, but she needs to okay. actually join the broadcast in order to, to be, okay. uh, well, if she's backstage, actually, we should be seeing her. So um, CJ, I'm, I'm hoping maybe you can troubleshoot a little bit from the back end um, and see about uh, getting her into uh, the rest of the session with us. Oh, she's in the chat. She says she's joined, but you can't hear or see her. Yes, no, uh, we, we cannot hear or see, but that may be because it looks like you've joined as an attendee rather than as a speaker. So I'm going to uh, see if any of my folks who are listening online right now can go to the back end and uh, maybe send Ms. McCabe a, uh, a link to the speaker session so she can join that. You know, this well, is the fun thing about, uh, about tech, right? <laughs> well, you know what, Shasta, while they're doing that, how about if I give a few little introductory remarks about Janet? Um, sure. So that everybody knows um, who who she is, um, they don't already. Um, she was sworn in as the 16th deputy administrator of EPA on April 29th of this year, and prior to rejoining the agency, Janet was a professor of practice at Indiana University and director of the Indiana University Environmental Resilience Institute. Over the course of her career, Janet led EPA's air office, where I work for her. Um, she worked for state environmental agencies and with a children's environmental health advocacy organization based in Indian Indianapolis. So she has a varied background. And um, let's see, I know that she is still on the uh, attendee side. I see some chats back and forth, Shasta, indicating that. Oh my that. gosh, yeah. Well, I'm telling, uh, um, Janet, I hope you can hear me, that I, I just resent you the speaker invitation email. And so if you check that, there should be a link for you to log in and uh, join us as a speaker. And thank you, everybody, for being patient with us as we, as we work out the, the little kinks here. Um, and it also, um, 
if you log in to the main lobby page, if you go to that page, there's also a my speaking schedule button on the side uh, that you can click on. It will show you the sessions for which you are a speaker and should allow you to join. Um, and you know what, while we're figuring this out, actually, maybe this is a good time for me to go in, go through some of those logistics. So I'm going to share my screen and show you all what, uh, what this all looks like. So you should be seeing uh, the main lobby page. Now I'm logged in, so you're seeing what I see when I'm logged in, but you should all be seeing something similar. So this is the agenda and you can set this up to show just the agenda for the day. So here's where we are right now in the what opening plenary. Like. So oh, I'm hearing somebody, is somebody back backstage with us? There she is. Here's Janet. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing so that she can so that she can go ahead and speak. Sorry about that, <laughs> but thank you for persevering. Oh, that's okay. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. And I have introduced you, Janet. So you are good to go. I heard all that. <laughs> okay. So, um, uh, you, you didn't say anything that um, that I shouldn't have heard. So um, so that's good. So um, hi, everybody. I'm, I'm so glad to have made it in. And I'm sorry about the, the, the glitches. Um, I have to tell you, I went to my first in-person conference this morning. It was actually hybrid, but um, I was there in person. And, and that was weird, too. So um, we're just all getting used to the world. Um, so I am thrilled, delighted to be with you. Um, I wish you could be in person. Um, I have to say some of my, um, my best memories from my prior time at EPA um, are spending time with our tribal partners. Um, and I just remember the, 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 the spirit, the, the, the joy, the love at gatherings with our tribal partners that is unlike anything else that I really experience in my, in my work or day-to-day -day life. And um, I, I value and treasure that so much and treasure your, your friendship and, and partnership. So thank you um, from me to all of you. And thanks to the Palo Band of Mission Indians for, for co-sponsoring the conference. For everybody who's joining, I have no idea how many people are joining, uh, um, but uh, I understand this is a, a very um, big deal, this conference. Um, and I look forward very much to um, a day soon, I hope, when we'll be able to gather again in person and be safe, because that is the most important thing. Um, whether we are meeting virtually or in person, um, I know you know that you have a true advocate and partner here in Region 9 uh, with Debbie Jordan and the amazing team at EPA Region 9. Um, and I say the same on behalf of, 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 of folks like me uh, that aren't lucky enough to live in Region 9 and uh, work with you from our headquarters offices. I know the list of challenges is incredibly long, um, but the partnership is strong and growing. And I know that we're going to make progress together as we have through the years um, that will continue to help us deliver on this collective mission we have to protect public health. Um, and the environment, uh, the Mother Earth that, that sustains us all. So it's a real honor for me to be here to help kick off the conference. Um, you've got an amazing set of meaningful and robust conversations over the next three days, and I wish I could um, spend the whole time with you. I feel so lucky and honored to be back at, at EPA again um, after uh, my time during the Obama administration, where, as I say, I developed such a deep respect and appreciation for our tribal partners and the nation and nation relationship that we have. And on a number of occasions, I was lucky enough to visit you in your homes and your communities, and I treasure those memories, and I, I look forward uh, to many more opportunities to do that. Uh, the connection that you have with the land and with our shared environment is an uh, example um, that all of us would do well to follow. But it also reminds us and underscores how important it is for all of us to keep pushing our ambitious agenda forward. We don't have a minute to waste. And waste is a word we think about a lot at EPA, um, i.e. don't do it. Don't waste resources. Uh, don't waste our precious clean water, clean air, and clean land, and don't waste time to address these things that are threatening um, the, 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 the very things that sustain all living things. So thank you for all the incredible work you work, you do every day to protect 
the, um, uh, the, the earth, to protect your communities and to protect the environment in Indian country across Indian, uh, across region nine. And what you do um, uh, on your lands um, has tentacles and ripples and helps the, the rest of us um, make that kind of difference too. So let me just say um, a few quick things. I hope they'll be quick uh, before you get to your, um, your discussions. Um, President Biden has made strengthening the nation to nation relationship an absolute top priority for his administration. And we are all so excited about the ambitious agenda we have ahead of us, the support that we have from President Biden and the opportunities we have to work together to address these most pressing environmental challenges we face. Um, uh, on top of the list is the climate crisis. To respond to these challenges, President Biden has set the most ambitious climate agenda in history. I think we can all agree on that. We thought we were pretty ambitious during the Obama administration, um, and uh, we, are, we are moving way beyond, and we have to uh, because of what's been happening in the world over the last four years. The president's climate plans are a once in a generation opportunity to create good paying jobs, secure US leadership on clean energy technologies around the world, and protect public health in our com communities, especially those that are overburdened. And EPA is moving with such a sense of urgency to help fulfill the president's agenda. One of the lessons I learned um, most in the when I was at EPA before was how quickly four years go by goes by and even how quickly eight years go by. Um, and if you're going to make meaningful change, it takes time. And I really am so thrilled that President Biden understands that and understands you have to plant seeds and they may take a while to grow. But the stakes are high and in, they're incredibly real and, and Region 9 is feeling them as much as any place um, in, in, in our environment. The crisis is affecting the health, the safety, economic opportunity, and security of, of communities across the country. Uh, we track climate indicators at EPA, and they show that climate change has become more evident, stronger, more extreme, uh, and, and so has the imperative that we take meaningful steps. So we're already seeing record-breaking temperatures across the country that impact so many in Indian country wildfire seasons that are longer and more destructive than ever before. Who better than you knows that? Sea level rise that threatens our infrastructure and our homes. Droughts that change growing seasons and make it harder to produce the native crops that have sustained our nation for centuries. And all of these impacts disproportionately affect Black, Latinx, Indigenous, and low-income communities. There is no small town, big city, rural, or tribal community that's unaffected. This is an all hands on deck moment. And that's why President Biden has adopted a whole of government approach rooted in science to help us confront the climate crisis. We have solutions at hand and they will fundamentally make people's lives better. And we are working with our colleagues across the federal government and with partners all around to, to move those forward. So in his executive order on tackling the climate crisis at home and abroad, President Biden stresses the urgency of implementing a mix of strategies to both mitigate climate pollution, to slow the rate of climate change, and to adapt to changes in climate that we cannot avoid. We know that tribes are being impacted first and worst. The first uh, social vulnerability report that we just released estimates the likelihood that American Indian and Alaska Native individuals currently live in areas where the impacts of climate change are projected, projected to be highest compared to non-American Indian and non-Alaska Native individuals. EPA's goal is to help raise overall tribal capacity to address climate impacts while enabling more leadership action. Existing tools such as gap grants and new tools that are under development will support this goal. We understand our federal trust responsibility, and we will listen to tribes and respond to their needs. Just last week, the agency released a new climate adaptation action plan, also required by President Biden. The plan identifies priority actions that we will take at EPA to help us fulfill our mission of protecting human health and the environment, even as the climate 
changes because our work is changing too. We have facilities that are threatened by these changes in the climate. We do work uh, in communities that have been hit by drought or wildfire or floods. Uh, we help uh, protect communities from hazardous waste sites that are threatened by floods. Uh, all of these things are gonna change the nature of our work. And we also have a responsibility to help communities that find themselves dealing with the impacts of, of these kinds of um, weather events. The plan includes a particular focus on ensuring that low income disadvantaged populations are considered in climate adaptation efforts. And we're also tackling the root causes of climate change. We are at EPA at the center of the president's ambitious, ambitious climate agenda. We're aggressively using our rulemaking authority and, and every other opportunity we have to deliver emissions reductions and protect people from harmful climate pollution here and around the world. So I'll just give you a couple of examples. Under what's known as the AIM Act, EPA issued a final rule to phase down hydrofluorocarbons, which are climate super pollutants used everywhere. They're ubiquitous. They're used in refrigeration and air conditioning and foam blowing. These are thousands of times more potent than carbon dioxide at changing our climate. And a global phase down of these super pollutants will avoid up to half a degree Celsius of global warming. That is huge to come from one particular program. We also this summer proposed new light duty vehicle emission standards that are based in technology and science. And by model year 2026 will be the strongest ever on record to reduce harmful climate pollution from motor vehicles. We're poised to make even deeper cuts in vehicle emissions through model year 2027 and beyond. And we're also looking forward to proposing a series of rulemakings for heavy duty trucks, ranging from the delivery trucks you see around your neighborhoods to 18 wheelers on our highways. Soon EPA will propose a new rule for new and existing oil and gas sources that will achieve major reductions in methane which is an incredibly potent greenhouse gas that we're learning more and more about every day. Um, it was identified in the most recent IPCC report for urgent action because it is uh, uh, reducing methane is such an immediate benefit to reducing climate pollution. We're also committed to writing a strong, durable rule to reduce greenhouse gases from power plants, to usher in a 21st century clean energy economy alongside the president's proposed clean energy standards. Our approach to reducing emissions from power plants and all these sectors will be guided by science, data, by the law, by our Clean Air Act obligations, with the goal of making climate progress, protecting public health, and advancing environmental justice while preserving affordable and reliable electricity, which we all depend on. So all of these standards and pros, proposals and plans leverage the latest technologies, cut greenhouse gases, and reduce other kinds of pollution too, pollution that contributes to asthma, heart disease, and other ailments. These are huge wins for public health and important to communities that have burdened with, uh, been burdened with air pollution for, for far too long, um, especially communities that bear the burden of cumulative impacts of many emission sources. So much, much more to come um, over the next um, few years. Um, we're so glad to be back working with you. I look forward to many opportunities to meet with you in groups or, or individually to visit you um, in your communities when that becomes feasible again. So thanks again for giving me some time on the, on, uh, at the beginning of your conference. I, I wish you a wonderful conference. I hope you make some new friends and steal some ideas from people and, um, and come away inspired and, and, and ready um, to, to really um, buckle down with us um, to do all this work. Thank you again for everything you do to protect tribal communities and the environment all across Region 9. Um, and uh, Deb and others, I will turn it back to you um, with my gratitude. Thank you so much, Janet, um, for those, those Thanks, great Janet. remarks. Um, so, Deborah, are you hearing me? Because I just got a funny alert yes. from my speaker. I'm okay. hearing Hi. you, Shasta. I'm hearing Great. you. Okay. I just, my, my headpiece just said I was disconnected, but apparently not. 
Um, so yeah, th that was great. Uh, and uh, I just want to make a, a, a note of observing that there are so many women doing this work. Um, and, uh, you know, no offense, guys, I mean, we know you're out there doing it too, but I, I'm finding more and more that it's women are in positions of leadership in, in doing the, the climate work in particular. Um, you know, so I'm, I'm grateful to all my, my, my fellow, uh, women who are, are coming out and being leaders. So I'm going to go back, uh, real quick to doing some logistics for folks. Um, and so, you know, Deborah, I want to thank you too. And, uh, you know, feel free to stick around for the, for the tour, but, um, at this point, we're going to get into a little bit of the nitty gritty. Uh, so at this point, let me share my screen again, and I will show folks, uh, what the lobby looks like and what you can do with it. So briefly, let's see. Okay, so as, as I was starting to say, this is our lobby page, and I was going to show you how you can show the entire agenda. You've got some tabs up here. Right now, I have mine set to just show today, but you can do this drop down here, and you can choose all dates, and it will give you everything. You can also choose to see past sessions. If you missed anything, you can look back to see what's already gone on. Uh, and so for some reason, it's now showing me speakers. Oh, that's right. So you can go to sessions. You can also see speakers. Um, these are my sessions. These are the five things in which I am speaking. And so if you are a speaker, you should also find your sessions over here. So that's the agenda. This is all from the lobby page. Here on the sponsors tab, it shows all of our wonderful financial sponsors, all the folks who uh, decided to help us out and you can click on these links and it will take you to the websites for our sponsors. And then this is important, the info desk. We have some frequently asked questions over here under the info desk tab. So how do I add a session to my schedule? It will show you here. How do I add a session to my calendar? Now we had this question in the R talk yesterday, but I will answer it again here. You can add a session to your schedule. That means you are adding it to your Excel events schedule. So it will create a schedule for you when you are online in the portal that will allow you to just go to see what you want to see. You can join those sessions. Uh, if you want to add them to your calendar, that means your Outlook calendar, your Yahoo or your Google calendar, or even your iMac calendar if you're using a Mac. Um, and that way you've got them in that schedule as well. And it will give you a link for joining those sessions. A couple of other questions. How do you edit your profile? Join a session. Um, our, some speakers have wanted to know if they can blur their backgrounds. There's an answer and a technique for doing that here. Uh, whether attendees, for the most part, uh, with one exception, are not able to unmute themselves and they do not appear on camera. I will cover the exception in just a moment. And just some troubleshooting if you're having trouble logging into a session. We also have a PDF download of the conference agenda here if you want that. And so this is a good place to go for your, your basic questions. As far as being able to join a breakout session or add it to your calendar, I'm gonna show you those here. So let's say that you want to join the GAP part one round table. To put it on your personal speaking schedule, all you do is click bookmark. It now shows that you are attending and when you go to workshops or it'll show you uh, what you are um, signed up to attend. If you want to add it to your calendar, just click here. It gives you the choice of Google, Yahoo, iCal or Outlook. Click on the one that you use. It will bring up uh, something that you can save and put that session into your calendar. If you decide you can't attend something after all, you can just go back and unclick. You have now unregistered from that session. So it's pretty simple. If you're not sure what you want to attend, but you have certain subjects that are important to you, you can go to the tracks and tags and click on that. And they are mostly in alphabetical order. I added a few at the last minute, so they ended up at the top. But you can go through here and you can click on the ones that you are interested in. If you want to learn about cannabis, you can click that. I don't know why it's saying no sessions available because there should be sessions. Oh, because I have it on today. So if I put this back to all dates, 
and then do cannabis. There we go. So now we can see that we have uh, several panels on cannabis that you can bookmark and attend. So again, you can do that for all of these different keywords and hopefully find what you are looking for. We have quite a few of them that should cover the, the usual topics that we would be covering at the conference. So just scroll through those and take a look. So I wanted to explain um, a little bit too about meeting and, um, and networking and people. So if you go over here to the people tab, it's going to show everybody who is registered and everybody who is speaking. So if you want to connect with somebody in particular, you can scroll through here and you can decide that you want to connect. So I'm going to connect with somebody in my office. Let me see if I can find someone. Uh, I could connect with myself, I suppose. I'm gonna connect with Lisa Gover. So there you go. You just click on connect and it's going to send a request to the person that you want to connect with. And then if they accept the connection, then you'll get a message saying that they've accepted and you now have a connection with them. You can see under my connections who you've already connected with. I have a connection with Kurt in my office. Going back to the all attendees, if you want to chat with somebody, you can click the chat bubble and over here, you can send them a personal message. So that will go just to that person you wanna chat with. You can also set up a meeting so you can choose a date and there you go my connection request was accepted um, you can choose a date for when you want to meet during the three days of the conference on the 20th choose a time and you can i'll choose a time of 10 20 and then you can send the request you can add a note in there uh, about why you want to meet with that person. So if there's somebody whose session you were really interested in and you want to follow up with them and learn more, you can send that meeting request. And then the two of you can talk one on one through the platform and see one another and speak using your microphone. So that's one of those exceptions about being able to unmute yourself and use your camera if you set up a personal meeting with somebody through the platform. And then the other exception is what's coming up next at, uh, at 1030 today. So we have set up these three state think tanks. There's one for Arizona, there's one for Nevada, and there is one for California. These do not have an agenda, but all attendees can join them with their microphone and their camera on. And this is an opportunity for 90 minutes for folks from the tribes in those three states to get together and just talk about whatever you want to talk about. That's why we're calling it a think tank. You get together in the same tank and you think about the issues that are important in your particular region, in, in your part of the state, and talk with others about their ideas as well. I'm seeing it as sort of a, like a networking session that we would have if we were in person, we would be able to talk with one another and share ideas. So go to the state, that you are in for your think tank and talk to the other people. There's not gonna be a moderator. Anybody can just say whatever they want uh, and well, within reason and uh, enjoy just spending some time chatting with one another and talking about issues that are relevant to your particular state. So again, you can be unmuted in that. You have your microphone, you have your camera for those think tank sessions. Also, they will not be recorded so they are not going to be shared with the rest of the attendees or they won't be online. So feel safe that you can say things. There's not gonna be any possibility for somebody to go back and listen um, or get a transcript or anything of the think tank. At the same time as the think tank, we have the tribal leaders round table. Now that is being hosted separately by EPA. It is not on Excel events. All tribal leaders received an invitation to go to the tribal leaders round table. And so that is again, separately set up by region nine. And we have had some tribal leaders who are going to be attending the RSVP to attend the tribal leaders round table. So I'm sure there are some tribal leaders that are listening right now. If you accepted that invitation, then you'll be going to that separately with EPA. 
for the rest of us who are staffed, that session was for tribal leaders only. So staff are not going to be attending that. So what we have now in, in uh, two minutes, we're gonna be coming to the end of this session, the welcoming session. And you're gonna have a half an hour to take a break, but I, I urge you to use that half hour to just go through Excel events, start looking at the agenda, add your bookmarks for things that you want to attend, add things to your calendar, take a look at people, start making connections, go to the chat. Um, and I do want to show you last thing where we've set up a lounge. I'm using a laptop that I'm not familiar with, so hold on while I get out of this. Okay, there we go. All right. So here's the lounge. We set up a swag lounge. So you can go to the swag lounge, you can click enter. And if you haven't already joined, it'll ask you if you want to join the swag lounge. But this is where we want you to put pictures of yourselves in your swag. So we have this picture sent to us by an attendee of her adorable dog, Tyla, wearing the conference bandana. So please share your pictures here. We've had a few people send us emails of the pictures. Oh, and here's, we already have one new activity here. There we go. Stephanie, thank you. Uh, pictures of the awesome stickers on her old R9 conference mug. Thanks, Stephanie. That's so cool. So please add your pictures here. There's also a live forum if you want to join that. If other people are in the live forum, you can just talk to one another in the lounge. So we have also a, a section over here with some photos that we've uploaded, and you can upload your photos here as well. So here's a picture of the swag. All right, with that, it is 11 o'clock. I'm going to stop sharing my screen here. I hope that that has helped you just a little bit with some of the stuff we have going on. And yes, Lori, we will feel free to like your dog. Thank you so much for sending that wonderful picture. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and call it here. So you have 30 minutes to look around and please join your state's breakout session to talk about state issues. And I will see you all in the California session. Lunch is at 12 to 1 on your own and then our breakout sessions start at 1 o'clock. Thank you all so much for being here and I will see you over the next now two and a half days. Bye everybody.